Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a quick preview of what I got coming up in this video. Uh, the first is a FLIR footage from a police of, um, I think it's a police helicopter, Long Beach PD. Second, I have this video. Actually, I showed this video before, but um, this is a much better version. It's, it's longer. It's 17 minutes long. And um, it shows uh, these guys pointing these uh, laser pointers at this UFO and it, boom, it lights up for them. But like I said, I, you know, I've done this video, but this is a much cleaner version. Uh, this is a, a compilation video. Um, I think it's out of Brazil, but it shows, um, you know, all these different UFOs that uh, someone else put together. But I thought, you know, these are really interesting. So I'll put a link to this. Uh, this is an old footage from 2010. These are um, some UFOs that were filmed over New York City. And uh, this is also a older um, release. This is from 2011. And, you know, like I said, all the people who have been, who are still waiting for disclosure, like, you know, disclosure has been happening for a long time. This is um, 2011. British officials released about 8,500 pages, but I will look at that and um, we'll look at some other photos. Uh, I also have this article here about the Anunnaki alien DNA advanced tech and extinction. Uh, we'll take a look at this. And last, I have this video about these giant unfinished megalithic stones that were uh, found in China. It's a very interesting um two minute, two and a half minute video. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to show you some other photos of these other um, megaliths that uh, have been found. So uh, let me go to the first video here. This is a UFO police FLIR footage. Let me go full screen on this. Look at this. It's uh, apparently dropping something. And, uh, you know, whatever's going on here, it, it's... Uh, you can't see it with the naked eye. This is only seen with the uh, the FLIR system in the infrared. So, you know, how, who knows how often UFOs are, are flying over our heads and um, we, as a species, aren't designed to see them. Our, our eyes are only able to see a very tiny... a very narrow band of the visible light spectrum. But the, uh, yeah, this, you know, this video is from 2004. But uh, that's, you know, that's all this video shows. Let me go on to the next one. Now, like I said, this video, I've uh, shown this video before, but I recently found this version, which is much cleaner higher quality and it's also longer and um you see these are these are people down here and this was a live this was a live event that took place in chile and um here let me play this let me go full screen and you can see how these people were yeah they were you know shooting these green lasers at that light and uh, watch what this light does and again, you know, you can see all the people down here. And this is during a live event. Yeah, look at all those people on the beach when that thing lights up. And, and then, you know, the video ends here. But, yeah, you know, these, I don't think these people... Or these lights or wh whoever's in this craft, I don't think they're visiting. I don't think they came from another dimension or from another galaxy just to come out here and put on a light show for all of these Chileans. You know, I think these are, you know, these could be some teenagers, like I said, of our, of um, the advanced species that live on the planet. And, you know, they probably took dad's, dad's anti-gravity cruiser and decided to come and you know mess with the surface monkeys uh you know who, who knows what's going on but yeah i think th the people in this craft have to be from this planet but anyways uh, let me go to the next 
video here. These, yeah, this video is uh, several. Now, again, I, you know, I don't want to get hit with a copyright violation, so I can't play it all, but whatever this is, this is definitely in the sky. I mean, look, look, look at the way that movement. Okay, this object is not something that was layered into this footage, you know, just based on the way it's going in and out of focus and the way the object is moving with the camera movement. Yeah, that tells me that um, this object is there in the environment. But uh, that this video shows this UFO, and then we, we, there's another UFO that they find here. There's another one here that this person finds. I think, yeah, these are all different videos that, um, you know, wh whoever put this video together compiled. But it's uh, 12 minutes of videos. There's another one here. You know, this, I mean, some of these videos, I think I, I might have done a separate video on them too. Some of these are repeats that I've done. But uh, I will leave a link to this video in the description. Let me go on to this next one. Yeah, this is uh, from 2010, New York City. And you know, whatever these things are, this is not the first time these things have been captured. There's a whole bunch of video out there. At least I've seen it. You know, maybe, maybe other people haven't, but uh, yeah, this this type of of uh, craft or whatever you want to call this is not unusual to me because I've seen lots of video of something very similar. Again, which is why, you know, after listening to people like Linda Moulton Howe. Um, Richard Dolan, Tom DeLong, they've all basically, you know, have said that we're not alone on this planet, that they have spoken to insiders who have confirmed that there are highly advanced species that, that share the planet with us. Again, this is not yeah, me, you know, c figuring this stuff out. This is me finally listening to um, what these other people have to say. People that are much smarter and much more informed than I am. But anyways, uh, th that's all this video is. Eight minutes long. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, and uh, yeah, here's here's something for all of the all of the people out there who are still waiting for big D disclosure. You know, little D disclosure has been happening from what I believe since the Roswell leak. I think all that Roswell information coming out was a, a government leak in order to start the process of getting people acclimated to this notion that uh, we're not alone. But yeah, this is from 2011. British officials on Thursday released about 8,500 pages of previously classified reports that document sightings of unidentified flying objects by the military and members of the public dating back to the 1950s. The 35 large files available via internet mainly covered the period between 1997 to 2005. But anyways, yeah, here's a link here. It goes to the um, to the National Archives, to the British National Archives. So, you know, if you want to read about um, their UFO sightings, go to this site here. Um, here you know, these are some photos that... Um, I didn't find these on this site, but um, I found these photos with the, with the article that uh, I found this on. Yeah, these triangle UFOs are U.S. military. I don't think um, these are, uh, you know, from our visitors or from uh, alien craft. Or I don't think these are from um, aliens who are visiting our planet. These these this one this one here different uh photo this is most likely u.s military and i say that because um i've done a story before where there were these uh plane spotters who saw 
uh, like three of these flying in formation and they also heard air traffic control give the clearance for these crafts because they didn't recognize some of the, the names that um, they heard because you know these guys that's that was their hobby their hobby was to watch planes and listen to air traffic controllers and they heard something that they didn't recognize and then um, they were able to photograph three of these crafts flying in formation and like I said you know someone in the military or someone at air traffic con control gave the clearance for these crafts to fly through so that's why I believe that uh, they're US military uh, this article here it's about the Anunnaki alien DNA advanced tech and extinction when you think of ancient civilization, what pops into your head? Aztec, Native Americans, and even the Romans? But what about what came before them? Imagine a technologically advanced ancient civilization that predates human existence. The Anunnaki may seem like a fable, but I promise it's anything but. And you know, that's, yeah, I also believe that everything that we have been told so far about our history, like, you know, our, our history starting in in Sumer and this notion that the that the there are people who came over Alaska from the Bering Strait the Clovis culture and they were the first you know civilizations no no that's all completely wrong um there's there is evidence of advanced civilizations here here let me play some of this video here They are one of the largest known megaliths on the planet. The Yangshan Quarry is an ancient stone quarry near Nanjing, China. It is preserved as a historic site. The quarry is famous for the gigantic unfinished stele that was abundant there during the reign of Yang. Yeah, one thing I want to say about these cuts here. These cuts are so that they could get this thing out of the bedrock. I remember thinking about, you know, looking at all the other uh, megalithic stones. Um, that, that that have been cut out of the bedrock and I always wondered how did they cut you know the the stone out of the out of the bedrock because there's you know you can't get a saw under here because there's too much weight on top so this is the way do, and you know and another thing that I want to point out about this is you find these giant megalithic quarries all over the planet and um, yeah that tells me that it was easy for them to do emperor in the early 15th century although it is believed to have been in use from at least the time of the six dynasties the majority of the work at Yangshan yeah, again look at this look at this cut here this is this is so that they could release this giant block out of the bedrock how they detached it from the from the bedrock still attributed to the wave of construction that took place after the Ming dynasty was founded in 1368 AD when the new emperor chose nearby Nanjing to become his capital city. In 1405, the emperor's son, the younger emperor, ordered the cutting of a giant stele in this quarry for use in the Ming Shaolin mausoleum of his deceased father. In accordance with the usual design of a Chinese memorial stele, yeah, look at the size of this rock. And you know, here's, they did it in Egypt. Again, yeah, this, these, these cuts here, this was to detach the stones from the bedrock. Same thing here. Look at that, 16,250 tons. I, I want to show you something. Okay, this is the way we do it now. Okay, in order for us to cut blocks of stone that is a, a fraction of the size that they were cutting, right? We have to use machinery, okay? So you have to conclude that if, if this is what we had to, we have to use, then back in the past, they at least had to have something similar, right? And, and again, in any academic who wants to tell you that primitive people did this, you know, to take away their degree, walk away from them, don't give them any credibility because they're, st they're, they're stupid, essentially. If they think that ancient people were able to cut these giant blocks of stone, this is an image of the Trilithon. This is in Baalbek, Le Lebanon. Look at the size of these stones. 
Okay, th these are the three of the largest cut stones on the planet. And look, yeah, here, there, here are the people down here. Here's another, here's another photo to kind of give you a uh, perspective of the size. And this one here. Look at this. This is a regular size man down here. And this is the, tr these are the Trilithon. And um, you know how, like Brian Forrester points out many times that, that these are two different um, civilizations. These smaller blocks were made by the Romans. These giant blocks on the bottom, again, because they're on the bottom, they're from a older civilization. Um, yeah, this is a much more advanced civilization. Look at the size of their blocks. And then, you know, this, this is the Romans who tried to uh, fix this. Yeah, all of this construction up here is the Romans. And then this is the, I think this is the Temple of Jupiter or the Temple of Bacchus, which again was built by the Romans. But um, in the same way Brian Forrester points out that all of the, uh, the pre-Inca um, megaliths are cut much more, are, are bigger. There's more precision in, in the cuts. You know, it, it, it's, not, it's not as crude as this. And another thing I want to point out is, I think, if, I mean, if this was the Romans, right, I think this is maybe 2,500 years old, right? And if this is the, um, the wearing, right, of 2,500 years, l l look, at, look at all the, um, how much this has worn down. Or the erosion, if this is, if this is 2,500 years of erosion, look, look at the erosion on these rocks. I mean, it's evident that the, it's, the, the, the erosion is much more severe, which again, it tells me that these rocks have to be incredibly old, definitely much older than what they're, uh, what they've revealed so far. But, to, you know, from, from my understanding, the, the, um, the tri this Trilithon, let me see, let me go back to this. The, yeah, this, because again, all of this was built by the Romans. But whoever built this, these were some of the first construction made on the planet. So there's some people who, who have speculated that these might have been landing pads for, you know, this, this other civilization that came to the planet and, you know, maybe they're, they had rocket ships or, you know, whatever, but there's some people who believe that this construction was a, was a, a landing pad for the, for the, you know, for this advanced civilization that came and, um, started life or started, you know, their civilization on this planet. And then, you know, whatever happened to them, Thousands of years later, the Romans came around and they built all this. But uh, if you want to, yeah, look, look up the Trilithon or the, um, the, um, this is in Baalbek, Lebanon. Look for the, uh, the Temple of Jupiter or the Temple of Bacchus. But these three rocks are called the, the Trilithon, the largest cut stones on the planet or some of the largest cut stones on the planet. But anyways, um, that is going to be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.